Welcome back, everyone. We just talked about all the pro days across the country. I apologize for uh, some of the audio issues on the breaks in between, but I'll get that figured out before next week, and we will continue on as usual. But the SEC just recently released their 2025 schedule, or at least some uh, sort of a pseudo schedule, if you will, for 2025, because it looks like a lot of what we're going to get in 2024. Um, there are a ton of games, obviously, in 2024 that we're very much looking forward to that we've already gotten to somewhat on our uh, breakdown of the best games throughout the week. And we're going to get those again in 2025 because it looks like as of right now, they are just going to flip locations and just play kind of a home and home for the next two years in the new iteration of the SEC with Texas and Oklahoma into the fray and no divisions. And that's the big question mark, right? Everyone was wondering once they got rid of divisions, once they added Texas and Oklahoma, would they head to nine games in the conference schedule? It doesn't look that way. It looks like they are going to stick at eight games and uh, at least through 2025 and then kind of figure out where they are. And Greg Sankey has made it very clear that it's not necessarily a long-term um, thing. They are still looking at scheduling going into the future. I don't know if they will increase to nine games, but he did say that as of right now, with all of the questions going on around the sport, especially with conference realignment and everything, he said it's probably best for us to wait on that, wait until um, we have a little bit more of an idea of what the future holds for this sport and where we are all sitting at the end of the day, and then we'll make a decision of how many conference games, how many non-conference games we want to play. But right now, it is eight conference games plus one game that you have to play against one of the major conferences or Notre Dame. That still does include the two Pac-12 teams, so Oregon State and Washington State, although I don't think anyone in the SEC is taking advantage of those two. Um, Not taking advantage, but is playing those two. Might be taking advantage of them, but... Uh, I don't think anyone is playing those two this fall, so we'll not be playing them in 2025. But although it is a while away and we have quite some time to wait for these, why don't we look into a couple of the games in 2025 that are just going to be really, really awesome to watch. And I think it starts in Athens, Georgia. They host Alabama and Texas in 2025. So two games that are going to be absolutely huge um, and the QB matchups, I think, are the things that everyone wants to know about, everyone wants to hear about. And for Georgia, I think it's likely Gunner, Gunner Stockton. He's been sitting in the wings for quite some time, kind of the Carson Beck way of things, and has been learning the ropes and likely will be ready to take over in 2025. But there's a kid that just came in there named Ryan Puglisi who I think is an absolute dude. I think he's going to walk on that camp or has already walked on the campus uh, about you know five miles behind me, but he's someone that everyone that has talked to him has said he has an incredible head on his shoulders, loves football to the nth degree, has an incredible arm, reminds me a lot of Carson Beck, honestly, in the way that he carries himself and the way that he plays. He's someone that a lot of people think is going to be a huge player for Georgia. He was committed during the Dylan Wyola craziness where he was committed, then decommitted, and went to Nebraska. He never flinched, and it reminded me a lot of the Malik, uh, Malik Murphy recruitment at Texas where Quinn Ewers comes in and Malik Murphy doesn't flinch, and everyone's kind of sitting there waiting for him to decommit or waiting for him to go somewhere else, and he never did, and he stuck it out, and he came onto campus, and now he's getting his chance at Duke. I don't think Ryan Puglisi is going to need to go anywhere to get his chance. I think he's someone that is going to be an absolute beast at Georgia and might just take over in 2025. So while Gunnar Stockton right now, I would say, is the betting favorite and probably the person that I would take, when we come around to spring, I think we're going to hear the name Ryan Puglisi much, much more, and it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. For Texas, it's easy. It's going to be Arch Manning. I think we have waited long enough for uh, the prodigal son, uh, as it were, to play at Texas. He is likely going to be the starting quarterback in 2025, barring some crazy turn of events, but it looks like Quinn Ewers will be off to the draft and Arch Manning will take the reins. There was a lot of talk about possibly him going somewhere else uh, this upcoming year. Never really happened, and the talk never really came from anyone in his camp, so I never put that much stock into it, but he's someone that everyone's really excited to see, whether you're excited to see him because 
you want to see him fall flat on his face or you're excited to see him because you want to see um, if he, you know, lives up to the remarkable hype that has been built uh, built around him. But he will likely be the guy and he'll be thrown into the fire in Athens. And then in Bama, kind of an interesting situation. They have actually three guys, in my opinion, that have a shot for this job. And obviously Ty Simpson has been there for some time. Um, stayed in when the new staff came over and is a very good quarterback and honestly fits Kalen DeBoer fairly well, has a lot of arm talent, is more of a pocket passer, unlike Jalen Milrow, who's actually been taking tons of strides. If you see some of the clips, he looks like a totally new person throwing the ball uh, throughout spring. But I think Ty Simpson is likely the betting favorite right now, but also Austin Mack came over from Washington with Kalen DeBoer. Another guy that he likes a lot is someone that's very talented, um, super tall and athletic and has a ton of arm strength. So definitely someone to watch there. And then Dylan Lonergan is someone that they absolutely loved at Bama, or at least the former staff absolutely loved the physical ability of him. And I'm sure the new staff will love it just the same. I think he's someone that will definitely uh, get a lot of talk around Tuscaloosa. I'm not sure if that will lead to him getting the job, but the talent is absolutely there. And especially with uh, Kalen DeBoer or whoever's calling Nick Sheridan, uh, the OC down there being able to be in his ear, maybe that talent wins out in the end of the day. Uh, a couple more games, Arkansas and A&M travel to Austin to play a game for the first time since 2008 for Arkansas and 2010 for A&M. Obviously, those are going to be crazy atmospheres. It's the first time Texas has played either of these teams. Well, they played a home and home with Arkansas fairly recently. Recently, I think in 2019, 2020, if I'm not mistaken, there. Um, but A&M obviously been a long time. They will travel to College Station this time around. But I know Texas fans are very excited to get them in DKR and possibly, you know, get that win against them in DKR for the first time in quite some time. So. I think those are two games that, if you're looking for an atmosphere, those are going to be very exciting. DJ Lagway, um, the incredible quarterback at Florida right now, as long as he is still at Florida next year, there is obviously some worry about that staff making it through the year on this end, and I think uh, in Gainesville as well. But as long as DJ Lagway is on campus, I think Florida fans will be more than okay with their future because this dude is absolutely special. He's going to play against UGA and Texas if he is in fact the quarterback at Florida next year and I can't wait to see this kid play I think he's someone that honestly is a program changer uh, everyone's talked about him that way pretty literally everyone I've seen uh, touch on this kid has said as long as Florida has him on the roster they have a shot and he is someone that is totally different in every way he was a remarkable player all throughout high school and if he can burst onto the scene for Florida in 2025, whether it's you know the current staff or a new staff, they're going to be having a ton of fun. And if uh, UGA especially breaking in a new quarterback, Texas breaking in a new quarterback. So at least in that sense, you'll be on level footing and you'll have that ability to possibly shock the world in those two games. So Florida is definitely someone that is definitely cautiously optimistic uh, about the future with DJ Lagway at the helm. Um, but there are so many games that will shift momentum from this time to this time next year, obviously. There are so many teams that are set to have huge years or could have huge years or could have terrible years, right? There's Missouri and Ole Miss obviously are set up for fantastic years this upcoming year. A&M is breaking in a new coach and kind of fighting for that. Oklahoma is another one that has tons uh, riding on this upcoming year. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this unfolds. But I do think it's going to be really fun. I think we're going to get, um, obviously, we're getting some old rivalries back with Texas, Arkansas, Texas against Arkansas, Texas against A&M. But also, I think some new ones could emerge. I think Oklahoma against Missouri is one that um, they will tell you never ended. But uh, it's definitely going to get ignited a little bit more in the next couple of years. Oklahoma LSU is another one that I think is possibly uh, could be a big time rivalry in this new iteration of the SEC. And there was kind of an interesting thing um, going through all of these schedules. And obviously, there are some people that came out uh, a little bit nicer than some others. And I realized going through this that the schedules are determined through your last 10 years of conference play. So your winning percentage through those years. So Oklahoma and Texas, it would go back to their time in the Big 12. 
So if you're a Texas fan, all of this craziness, this last decade that has been probably the worst decade in the football program's history, you finally get a little bit of a payoff. The SEC schedule has been a little bit nicer to Texas in the first two years, so not necessarily worth it, I don't think, if you ask Texas fans. But at the end of the day, they'll take what they can get. So uh, I think getting a comfortable landing into the SEC is huge. Oklahoma's on the other side of that coin. Uh, They absolutely dominated the Big 12 for the majority of the last decade, especially when Lincoln Riley and Bob Stoops were there. And it looks like uh, they are going to have a rough landing into the SEC. They have tons of games. Uh, They play Alabama, LSU. I think they play Missouri as well. Just They obviously play Texas. So tons of games that are going to be very tough for the Oklahoma Sooners. But at the end of the day, Brent Venables, I feel, is more than up to the task. I think he's someone that has a very good vision for what his program is going to be. And although it could be kind of a bumpy landing, but at the end of the day, I think OU is going to be more than fine. And then uh, a final little tidbit about this schedule kind of rollout. It looks like in 2025, there could be the possibility of games kicking off at some different times. So say A&M and Arkansas kick off at noon, there could be a game kicking off at 1245 against Missouri and LSU or whoever. So they could do kind of a shotgun type start for uh, some of the games, which would obviously be really fun. It's March Madness time right now, the way they start the games in you know that weird succession so none of them are all at halftime at the same time that's always really fun so I would not necessarily be opposed to that it would make you know the breaks and everything a little bit tougher and the tv surfing a little bit tougher but anytime I could be watching football and not watching a um, halftime report I'm more than up for so that's a very interesting little tidbit in there but it looks like 2025 schedule for the SEC is going to look a lot like the 2024 schedule. Just flip the sites and you'll know exactly who you're playing. So obviously not the biggest update, but definitely some interesting tidbits in there. Um, And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how the SEC kind of rolls out in the next couple of years. But that'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It does uh, make a huge difference for us here at the channel. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram for all the content and updates. As we talked about, it is March Madness time, so uh, basketball podcast, if you want any of that, uh, my guy Nelson over there will take care of you there. So definitely tons of stuff going on around the world of sports. If you need any update, we are here for you. So Uh, Thank you once again for listening, and I will see you guys Monday.